We are three days into olive picking. Uh, no, we're two days into olive picking. Today is day three. It feels like three days. So um, I'm off this morning to go to speak to a guy called Claudio at the Frantoio, which is the olive press, to see, hopefully, if he's there, if he will give me some of his Sansa, they call it, which is the, the sort of pulp waste product from pressing the olives um, I'm also going to get a, a cassetta because we've run out of olive sacks now we need to um, we need to we need to be able to empty them into to something bigger so hopefully Claudio is there I will get a cassetta whatever the case um, but yeah this is my second time going and I haven't managed to get in touch with them yet so fingers crossed today's the day So I got my cassetta and all that was left was the hard work of finishing picking the olives, taking them to the press and then waiting for the end of November when I was promised my Sansa. We chose to use a two-phase press this year because the waste product from the olives pressed in a two-phase press ends up like a wet pulp. This is the kind of waste product that's suitable for composting and it was this product that I wanted to start our compost project. The second reason we chose this particular olive press was because of their organic status. And this year I started the registration process for becoming an organic olive oil producer. Before we could start the compost project, we needed to prepare the land where we were going to put the olive mill waste. Olive mill waste is a biohazard that can leak into the earth and into the waterways and cause lots of damage. So we had to build a ditch to stop any rainwater from washing the hazardous parts of the olive mill waste down the hill and into our veg patch. We also prepared the ground by laying down a load of cardboard that we had collected over the year. So we've just been to the Frantoyo to try and get our first lot of Sansa and we've kind of been stressing about it all day because uh, we're trying to get four cubic meters of Sansa. There's my son on his, in his ape. Um, and in the, the area that we live in, there's lots of hills. So it's lots of upping and downing in the truck with the trailer attached to it. Um, and it will be weighted down. So we were really concerned that we wouldn't be able to do it or that it was going to be really, really stressful. But we just went down there and... Uh, Claudio, who runs the Frantoya there, he's like, I'll just bring it around tomorrow. And I was like, Whoosh. suddenly all the stress is lifted and I'm really, really pleased. It's awesome. So hopefully tomorrow we will have our first load of Sansa or olive, olive mill waste um, and we will get to start making the compost. So... To my horror, what arrived was not wet sands as I had anticipated, but a very dry mix of olive nuts and olive husk. I wasn't even aware that Two Faced Presses made this product. 
and it's not particularly considered a waste product because it's used to turn into pellets for pellet burning stoves. And worse still, because it had a value, I hadn't negotiated a price for it. What I wanted was the waste product that olive mill presses don't use and have to pay to get rid of. This is the product that is a biohazard and it's the phenols from this product that leak into the earth and into the waterways. But when composted, turns into something usable as a fertilizer for the olive trees or for the veg patch. I went back to the front toyo, tail between my legs, pleaded ignorance. Thankfully, Claudio decided that rather than charge me for this product, he would exchange some work for my unsuspecting husband. And the project went on. Thankfully, I was able to use some of the wet sands that had been discarded on a hill not too far from our house, along with the leaves that were there. This small mistake actually worked in our favour because the mix of the two different kinds of sansa made for a much better consistency of compost. Finally ready to mix the compost, and the digger track breaks. We had to wait two weeks for a new track to arrive before we could start mixing the compost. A few weeks on, we've got our thermometers in there and the, the temperature's creeping up slowly. Yeah, we're really happy with the final results. It's turned out really lovely. We've got our plastic cover to cover it up when when it gets wet to stop any of the biohazardous substances leaching out into the soil. So hopefully within just a few months we'll have some really nice compost. So watch this space.